unfortunate situation here on the very first lap. But we're about to go racing again as they come off of turn four and still in the pit is Elliot Sadler. And, and now they're not going green again. The yellow bay's back out. Dick Bergeron. Elliot Sadler, who was on the pole for this race last year, is on pit road. They are working on the back end of that car, tearing what's left of the sheet metal out of the right rear corner. They've got a baseball bat underneath the left rear corner, trying to get enough fender clearance. And there he goes, out back to join the fight. And the field will get a take one. And we'll look for a restart next time by. Even driving on the freeway, when something happens three or four cars ahead, Drivers often very suddenly have to check up and jump on the brake. Well, imagine doing that at three times the speed. That's just what happened there. Well, you guys know that that is why everybody wants to have a great qualifying time. The closer to the front you are, the less chance you have of getting caught up in a wreck like that. Tomorrow, live on CBS, the Great American Race. The 40th annual Daytona 500 for the 20th consecutive year. CBS will bring you live flag-to-flag -flag coverage starting at noon Eastern time. There is Jeff Burton's Ford, and you see the damage Dick Bergman talked about. See, they've done a lot of, a lot of work on the grill of the car. That is 200 mile an hour tape right there. These race cars could not race here without that 200 mile an hour tape when there's damage to a car. That, you wouldn't believe how good that makes that car uh, aerodynamic again, just to be able to slap that tape on there and know it's gonna work. For those of you watching in Iowa, Brad Loney has come from that 42nd provisional spot up to 25th, gained 17 positions in one lap. Nice start. Still working on Elliott Sadler's car. We may get this restart without him. McLaughlin, the pole sitter, is the leader. Joe Nemechek, Jeff Purvis, Dale Earnhardt Jr., third generation driver. There he is, number three. And Bobby Hillen are your top five. Bobby Hillen, the former winner at Talladega in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, is uh, back in this series this year. Trying to build momentum. And we're back under green. Seven laps complete. First one under green, the rest under caution. Here comes LaJoy down to the inside, that blue car. And he's going to get a little help down there in the low lane. As they go back to turn one, that's John Andretti. 96. Check who won the season closer at Homestead, Florida, goes to the outside. And Jeff Purvis there in the four car on the outside there. They have a draft right now. The first car is pulling along, as you can see Jeff Purvis moving in the second. It's so important to get with people that you work with for the day. These guys can button up now and really make it tough. They can break away if they work together right now. And Mike McLaughlin is going backwards because he's down on the low groove and everybody saw that move on the outside, so they just went on the outside. And Ooh, three abreast. There's almost room to do that. Almost, yes. That's Tony Stewart in car number 44. Dick Trickling, 64 on the outside of him. Look at Dale Earnhardt Jr. in third place there. He's really doing a super job coming off turn four there, way beyond the, what you would think a guy, the first race that he's ever run right now, running third place in the Grand National here. What a job he's doing. Had first a good race. qualifying run, and Steve Park, who drove that car last year, was standing in the garage next to it this morning. I said, are you homesick? He said, no. He said, this young fella is fast. The problem is just keeping the bridle on him. He's going to have a good day, it looks like. Ralph Shaheen. Mike, you're headed down the right path there. I talked to his crew chief, Tony Urie, this morning. He said Junior didn't even sleep last night. He was so excited to get behind the wheel of this race car today. 
buddy. First time you ran Daytona. Did you get any sleep the night before? Didn't want any sleep. Didn't need any sleep. All I want to do is go racing. Look at these guys right now. Can you imagine the first time you ever competed at Daytona being up there where the world's looking at you? Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that number three. A little further back. There's Brad Loney on the outside, that yellow and green car. Made the field on a provisional. He's trying to pull Tim Fedewa and Jeff Burton up that outside line. And that was Larry Pearson down on the inside line. Pearson, of course, uh, if you recognize that car, Norman and Dale Jarrett's in it. In the car number 32, that is. Pearson, a former champion of this series, two-time champion, as a matter of fact. Ten laps complete. Let's go back to the garage area, Bill Stevens. Mike, I'm with Jeff Krog. You're okay physically, but emotionally, you took a shot. Yeah, it is tough. Uh, we worked really hard on this car to get it ready for this race, though. Like, I feel sorry for the guys, because we all put uh, a lot of overnight, you know, stage getting this thing ready, and, uh, you know, it hurts. You know, we're going for the points this year, and, uh, you know, out the first race, but we're going to try to get it back out there and get some laps. They're working on the car right now, and, Mike, that's the car that Joe Bessie wound up on top of. On the outside, Dave Blaney. You're used to seeing him in a World of Outlaws sprinter going sideways and up on the cushion. That's that number 93, the Bill Davis entry in the Bush Series this year. He looks like he's been on pavement all his life. Mike, those open-wheel drivers are starting to jump over into the East divisions of NASCAR, and they're really making an impression. That's where Jeff Gordon comes from also. <laughs> He started in the 10th position, has already moved up to 6. He's learning quick to now make that field. Joe Nemechek on point, picking up where he left off at the end of last season. You see Randy LaJoy in the 74 there, making a move toward the front. He said it really does not matter where you qualify here. You need to have that car working well. You're looking back at, from uh, Randy LaJoy's car as he heads down the back straightaway. I tell you what, Randy is the driver. He'll be up front before this day is over. He's kind of cut from the Baker mold. Put your foot down and see what's <laughs> left at go the end of the race. Say, go ahead and say it. Perfect driver. Number two hat, number 14 shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Shaheen. Mike, Dave Blaney's got a lot to learn when it comes to drafting. The only drafting he was ever able to do in his sprint car was at the Syracuse Mile. And there it's a lot different. When you swing out of the draft, the balance of the car tends to get upset. Here it runs a whole lot different. There's Blaney, that black car, number 93, with the red, white, and blue stripe. A lot of surprises right up at the front of this field. Earnhardt, the rookie. Blaney here, the rookie. And LaJoy has climbed a seventh spot on the right corner of your screen. Paul Center McLaughlin dropped back to 16th. He's regained one spot. Joy has come from 22nd position. He is on the tear. Last year, Randy LaJoy won this race from 14th. Today, he started 22nd. He is up to 7th as he comes past the start-finish line. He's taking a look to the inside there. He thought maybe I ought to make that move, and he could see the outside car had a great run on the uh, trial there. Now they're going to the outside. They're trying everything to move up right now. He's following 17, Matt Kenseth. I swear that car was black and red all week long. Last night they picked up a sponsor, completely repainted it. But it's still Kenseth again, as last year, in that black 17. Here comes LaJoy in the 74. He's got a great run there. You see Blaney dropping back. Whether he has a problem or not, he has something wrong. He's going backwards. I think that Blaney might have slipped just a little bit coming off turn two, cost him a little bit of momentum, and the others got a good run off there and had plenty of momentum. Ed Barrier, unscheduled pit stop, he's going a lap down in the pits. Now here's McLaughlin, top of your screen, that white and blue number 34, getting right back into it. That's Buckshot Jones up along oh. the outside, and it, that's at 17 <laughs> just ahead of Kenson. Now Ooh. you say... Getting a great run, how do you do that and get a great run on the car ahead? Well, first of all, that, that you don't slip coming off the turn, that, and you also don't pinch the car down. Sometimes you, you cut down too low coming off the turn, and you'll, you'll pinch it down and lose some of your momentum because it's taking away the horsepower of the car coming off the turn. And also, uh, the relationship between you and another car coming off the turn, too, can 
help you build a lot of momentum. Mike, if you can keep it wide open, somebody else lifts getting in the corner, you have somebody behind you, that's how you get a great run. Dick Bergeron. Jeff Gordon into this field has come from Florida Bill Davis. He also brought a fellow named Bobby Labonte, and right now it's Dave Blaney. Where do you find these talented young racers? <laughs> you just have to pay attention. Uh, now Dave's doing a great job. You know, he's going to do a wonderful job with the car. He's a racer. You know, it's, it's a big step to get these cars and a big step to run the draft, but he's going to be just fine. The one thing they are worried about, Mike, is kidding. He has not had any experience or any practice at going from 190 miles an hour and getting a car down pit road. Good point, Dick. He will get some today. Bill Davis, one of the nicest guys in the garage area. Up to sixth is Randy LaJoy as we look at Dave Blaney and Buckshot Jones in the double zero. They're pulling up on Bobby Hillen, as is John Andretti. Just ahead of them, this man, Randy LaJoy, last year's winner of this race. Last year's winner of his second consecutive Bush Series championship. He's a man on a mission. Mike McLaughlin, hand in the air. Somebody checked up in front of him. Ralph Shaheen. Gary Cogswell is the crew chief for Mike McLaughlin. What are you saying to him, Gary? Is he going to be okay? He's coming up. Oh, he's running fine. Right there at the restart, he actually broke away a little bit, which actually kind of hurt us because we'll let him line up behind him and get a run on him. He's picked off a few spots, moving back toward the front, so I'm not worried about it at all. we got a real fast car, got a great motor in it. Mike's going to use a lot of patience. McLaughlin is right behind Hermes Sadler, that yellow Chevrolet, but right behind McLaughlin, he's got a mirror full of the winningest driver in this series. Mark Martin is who you're talking about, and Mark Martin knows patience. He knows how to draft. They'll work their way to the top. I would love to look at my mare and see whether I was going to follow him or, or lead him. I would want Mark Martin around me. Well, he started 26th and is all the way up to 12th now, Mark Martin. Martin right behind Mike McLaughlin. That's 11th and 12th place. At the front of the field, Joe Nemechek, Jeff Purvis, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Matt Kenseth at the fourth, and Randy LaJoy has climbed up to fifth ahead of Dick Trickle. CBS Sports coverage of the Napa Auto Parts 300 continues after this message and a word from your local station. some point we've got some new guys up there great you know it'd be neat tomorrow just yep. like mark martin where he started and where he's at now if we could show that okay here is where he started okay there's for you okay good thank you no problem I thank did. you this, this column's where they started. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, he, he's okay. already up there you now. Bet. Anytime he gets the top 12, he's in the, well, back the, in the business. Man, LaJoy from 22nd to 5th. Oh, yeah. Whoa. He's a driver, man. That's what people... He's see. a racer. People forget that at Daytona. It comes down to who wants to go. You don't have to be the fastest. Nope. Just the best. <laughs> Larry looked pretty loose on the bottom there when we were watching the wind card. Yeah, he did. I could tell you that any time you're underneath the inning cars that on this racetrack, it yes, does sir. that. You can watch Got it. Got it. Very good. Okay, that's 11th on back, fellas. Mark okay. has 11. All right. Sadler, 12. Okay. Welcome back to Daytona. 21 laps complete. Big battle in mid -tempo. Oh, trouble. One goes up in the wall. You can see the tire going into turn three then. Something happened to Mike Dillon's car. 
Right front tire, I watched this red. You can see the right front fender is missing there. Well, there's no caution. Not as yet. Dillon is in turn four. He's going to try to limp down on the track apron. Still a couple of cars of traffic. Three more to get past him. To see if he can get down onto pit road. Caution is coming out, though, Mike. We do have a caution. And perhaps there was debris from the tire, maybe some sheet metal as well. I'd say, Ned. Yeah. Wow. Dylan had a good run going. He'd come from 23rd starting spot up to 14th position. I got to tell you something. That, if that's all the damage you have hitting the wall at 200 miles an hour, you are very lucky. He was up against the wall down the back straightaway when the tire let go, so he was very lucky. The suspension pieces on these cars are patterned after stock Detroit parts. But over the last several years, they've been refined, and while they're made to those dimensions, they're much stronger than what's on your street car. Sometimes you can take a whack like that and keep on running. Let's see what happened here. Okay, he's in the in this pack of cars. Right there, you can see the right front go flat. You can see the rubber flying off of the car there. Dylan's in big trouble. The one thing that saved him, Mike, you could have iron under there, but you need to be three inches away from the wall when you hit it too. Here's another, you see the tire is already flat. And he's, it just, when he starts into the corner, it just takes him right out to the wall. And buddy, that, that's an important point. If he was running down on the low lane of the racetrack, there wouldn't be that much left of that race car. There wouldn't be half of it left. You're exactly right. We're under caution at Daytona in the Napa Auto Parts 300. Joe Nemechek leads Jeff Purvis. We'll be right back. That was one time I was looking directly at it when it happened. I mean, I watched the tire go boom. You could see the almost the dust fly, you know? And there's but the result. Down the straightaway, yeah, he made waves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I tell you what, that was, uh, he was lucky. If you can blow a tire, have it on the straightaway not going in the corner where he ducked down on the bottom lane. Boy, yeah, if he'd been he'd on the bottom like lane. He'd look like straighter if he'd right. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That was a good point. Very good point. Okay, pit stops. Yeah. Okay. CBS Sports celebrates NASCAR's 50th anniversary, remembering one of its most emotional finishes. The second place driver, Randy LaJoy, said, I don't know if I could have beaten Joe that day, and I don't know if I wanted to. Homestead, Florida, November 97. Joe Nemechek, on the track that took his brother's life just months earlier, celebrates with his family in Victory Lane and with his young son, John, named for Joe's late brother. He's a lap down. He's a lap down. Three, at, oh, at, yeah. yeah, the three car has stalled. Well, they wouldn't let him stop. It's a good year. Is that before the vignette? Uh, trouble on Earnhardt on pit road, the far end of pit road. Okay. Oh, boy. Lance, which is first, the vignette or the blimp? Thank you. Thank you. Now, do you see what they're doing? They're changing left side tires, too. CBS Sports celebrates NASCAR's 50th anniversary, remembering one of its most emotional finishes. The second place driver, Randy LaJoy, said, I don't know if I could have beaten Joe that day, and I don't know if I wanted to. Homestead, Florida, November 97. Joe Nemechek, on the track that took his brother's life just months earlier, celebrates with his family in Victory Lane and with his young son, John, named for Joe's late brother. Joe Nemechek leads this race. Front row Joe, they call him, because that's where he most often starts in Winston Cup and Bush Series racing. 
Now on pit stops, here is Dale Earnhardt Jr. making his pit stop. See him come in a little hot there. Got on the brakes, slid the front Ooh. tire. Jack Mann jumps up in the air, gets, gets tagged a little bit. Ralph Shaheen. Well, the Jackman is Kevin Pennell. Tony Urey Jr. also working on that right front. Now, after they got the car serviced and they let him go, he ended up snapping the U-joint. So the crew is underneath the car working on this number three, trying to get Dale Earnhardt Jr. back in the race as soon as they can replace the U-joint. Dick Bergeron. Joe Nemechek was leading before that yellow flag. He came in. They did a real quick pit stop, just over 17 seconds. Took two tires and a lot of fuel in that car. They said they weren't worried about four tires because horsepower and fuel are the issue. Burton came in 17th. He went out third because he took no tires. Ken Squire? As you look at Joe Nemechek, that, that moniker, front row, Joe Wally Dollenbach dubbed him with that. And that came from Winston Cup Racing a year back when... Uh, in five races, he was on the pole three times, and he started calling him Front Row Joe. And Joe said, I'd like to become known as One Win Joe. That was at Winston <laughs> Cup. You're in Grand National. You're looking at a five-time winner, fixing to make it six. He can stay up on top of the Napa 300. Thanks, Ken. Buddy, what happened to Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car leaving the pit? Well, he probably was in a hurry because all that problems had happened and let the clutch out real hard and it snapped the U-joint on the back part of the drive shaft. You could see the drive shaft, that was that long cylinder they were putting under the car there. And on the back side there, that's a U-joint that really hook up to the rear end and, and propel the rear wheel. So when that goes out, you're dead in the water Do you fix it. And you could have accelerated about the same time to let the jack down and uh, that would have put a lot more pressure on those parts. So Dale Earnhardt Jr. sits on pit road. He'll go two laps down as the field comes by. Getting set for a restart. After this caution flag for Mike Dillon, who went up into the wall after cutting a tire. On the restarts, you can only pass to the right before the start finish line. That's why everybody runs up in the high lane. We're back under green. That red car down on the inside, car number 77, is Robert Presley. He had made a green flag pit stop. He is one lap down. I mean, not Robert Presley. That is Ed Barrier in the car number 77. And you see the leaders moving around him. Mark Martin pulling up behind his Roush Racing teammate, Jeff Burton. Martin up to fourth place after starting 26th. Wow, what a run. He's doing his job. Look back here, though. Three wide as they head down into turn three. Everybody wanted to catch on to that lead draft. Right behind Martin, Tony Stewart. Winner of the IRL opener. Another graduate of the open wheel ranks in that white, yellow, and black number 44. Look at Michael Walker, Benjamin 21. He knows, knew that he had to get back on the outside of the racetrack and back into the draft. Now he has to help. But here comes Mark Martin on the outside. And look at Tony Stewart coming right with you. Tony Stewart learned something in the Iron Rock race that was run here at Daytona yesterday. The drafting part of it, that was a good experience for him. And he knows that if he can hang on to Mark Martin, that's a good man to follow. First of all, he'll keep him out of trouble. And also, he'll learn him a lot about drafting and take him to the front. Ralph Shaheen. Well, this is a look at the drive shaft that was underneath Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. Here's the good end. Here's the bad end down here where it snapped off, Mike, right at the usual. Earnhardt Jr. back in the fray. Posted his three laps down. Joe Nemechek leads the back to start finish, and Earnhardt Jr. is back on pit road. His dad won this race seven times. Young Dale having a tough time of it today. Well, we talked about how disappointed those drivers were that were in the first lap crash. And uh, they can't anyone be more disappointed than Dale Earnhardt Jr. right now. And look at this racing. Bobby Hillen there in the eight, he was a front runner before the pit stop, but he's way back in the back right now. And you can see back in there, things are starting to pick up. Those were cars that made pit stops, many of them. There's Mark Green, 37, on the inside of Jason Keller's, 57, and Ed Barrier sliding back a bit through the field. And the three car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been taken behind the wall. Jeff Burton on the inside there. The yellow car continues to lose a bit of ground. 
he is I, out of that front pack. I think the reason that the front of the car was damaged in that wreck a while ago, you can see the gray tape on it, but it's still not up to par as far as he's concerned. Maybe he got a lick around the wheels or got it out of line just a little bit, but he's not up to speed like he was. Now there's the front two pack single file. You see Mark Martin trying to move up on number four. Jeff Purvis single file at the front of the pack, but anything but toward the middle of that pack. As you see them move into turn number three, still a lot of side-by-side -side racing there. Mike oh. Wallace coming up the inside. He was part of that pack. That's Mike McLaughlin, the white and blue car, 34, working the inside against Tim Fito as 33. Now they're moving past that 77 of Barrier. Let me explain about the windshield you're looking out of there. They clean the left side when you make a pit stop. Very seldom do they ever come to the right side. His left side isn't that great, though, Ned. He's been behind somebody that's getting a little bit of oil out of the cars, and I don't know why, but the uh, windshield's pretty uh, nasty looking right now. Not only that, but you see a little fluttering right there, just above there on that windshield. There is a piece of clear plastic film over the actual Lexan windshield. When they make a pit stop at halfway, they'll peel that away, and Mike will have a clear view once again. And, of course, that'll keep it from pitting. The, the windshields, you get a lot of uh, pitting because of the fine sand and everything that come up off of the racetrack and hitting at 200 miles an hour. Oh, ooh, ooh Michael. Mike McLaughlin's oh, car is all kind of loose. They plenty just on the outside of him there. The turbulence, you can see the two cars actually pulling towards each other in the draft down the front straightaway. Everybody wants to get back to that front pack. Ralph Sheen. Mike, this transmission here is about to go underneath Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. It's this part back here that broke when the drive shaft snapped. It came up, broke this off, so Dale can't get any gear. So they're going to replace this and get him out. Now, we chat, tried to chat with him. He's so frustrated. As we said earlier, he couldn't even sleep last night. He was so excited for this race. Then to go through all these problems, it's tough being a rookie at Daytona. Anticipation's one thing. Frustration's another. He may not get any sleep tonight either. They were running third when they came in for that pit stop. Ten little Indians, all in a row, <laughs> single file in the lead draft at Daytona. You see, Mark Martin has already moved up to third place, Mike, and with him is Tony Stewart. I think if Mark Martin makes the move, Stewart's going with him. He's found a partner he likes to run with. So you do need to find a friend out there. I didn't say a friend. I'm <laughs> ten laps to go. You can't find one, but right now you will work with people you like to run with. Dick Bergeron. Bridge here, but Jeff Burton is now falling back in the field. Tommy Bur uh, Tommy Morgan is crew chief. What's happening to your car? Well, we got a little bit of damage on the nose of the car, and it's kind of hurt. And he didn't realize it was as bad as it was. He tried making a move to pass, I guess, and it just didn't want to go. But without nobody helping him real good, now he's got some cars coming behind him. I think we'll be all right. Can you fix it? Oh yeah, we're gonna work on it all day long. They're not gonna give up, Mike. They're not going to give up fighting in this second pack either. They have been three wide all the way around the racetrack. Poor Tim Fito was there in the 33 car. He's a Kleenex car. You can see him. He got caught in the middle. Dick Trickle's caught in the middle right now. He's dropping back. I tell you what, these guys are having a time. That's Phil Parsons yep. in the Duraloop car, the red car. Phil has the Duraloop sponsorship this year on his car number 10. And, boy, he was caught in the middle. He was glad to get out of that. Right in the middle of that pack, Ned, uh, that white totally devoid of all sponsorship number 15 is Kenny Schrader's car and Mike Wallace is subbing for Schrader today and he's getting a real workout following 96 John Andretti there right in the middle of that snarling That's that car right there. That's Shane Hall in the 85 running along there quite well also. Good short track racer. Now pretty good in Daytona. Back up front. Joe Nemechek continues to hold Jeff Purvis right up close near his bumper. Purvis has a lot of Winston Cup experience. He's a veteran of this series. He drove for James Finch for most of last season. Finch let him go. Tried other drivers, including Dale Shaw, and then he and Purvis teamed up again at the end of last season. And they're going to run the whole year in that number four car together. There's Mike Wallace. The only decal on that number 15 car in the back says APR. Andy Petrie racing. Yeah, that's enough. That's a good thing to have because Andy Petrie is certainly very knowledgeable. He was once a crew chief for Dale Earnhardt when they won the championship. Great car. Of course, he's now the crew chief and car owner for Ken Schrader in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Whoa, they're getting close to that outside wall as they come off the trial there.
from Randy LaJoy. Number 74, looking back at Matt Kenseth, who moved from 14th to 13th a lap ago. Mike McLaughlin right behind them, and then Jeff Burton. Now, LaJoy lost a little bit on that pit stop. He's back in 12th place now. He had moved up in the top five before the caution and before the pit stop. Back up front is still Joe Nemechek at Purvis just hanging right there with Purvis might be content where he's at. His car is probably comfortable right there. He knows as long as that uh, group of cars right there running a single file that they're pulling away from the rest of the field. Let's go to Ken Squire. Eight Fords started this race. Only two of them are the new Taurus. And that number 21, Michael Waltrip, is one of them. And he came in complaining because as they were coming to Daytona, they found out that restrictor plate coming down another 16th of an inch. But it's not bothering Michael from 27th. He's up in that lead draft running in fifth. Now the other Taurus is in the second pack of cars. That's Jeff Burton. He had been running with his front group. He's just fallen back. But for Ford enthusiasts, there are some Tauruses out here, and the colors for the moment are being carried in fifth place by none other than Michael Waltrip, number 21. Mark Martin, of course, drives the Ford, but he's running the Thunderbird. Elton Sawyer has the other Taurus in the race today. You're with Mark Martin, the third place car. 37 laps complete here at Daytona. We'll be right back. <laughs> 